Hello my gorgeous ones, welcome to Alicia Budget Beauty. My name is Alicia, here on my channel, I love all things affordable fashion and beauty. I do hauls, tutorials, reviews, why I bought it, why I'm not buying it, I guess that's what this video is, all kinds of fun stuff. So if that makes sense to you, please subscribe, stick around, be a friend. Okay you guys, there are several eyeshadow palettes that have tempted me in the past month or that are still tempting me to this day and I've done uh, two other videos like this I think before where I just show you guys some of the most hyped recent eyeshadow palettes and why I either did purchase them why I passed on them ones that I'm thinking about purchasing and this is a tough I mean I've I've bought some palettes and I'm trying to be good in 2024. I don't know that I'm starting out that well. I think I did better in 2023, but um, I'm just gonna talk it over with you guys, give you guys my thought and my thought process of why, even if I am really tempted, why I talk myself out of buying a palette and maybe why I talk myself into it. So if you wanna hear my honest thoughts about some of the newest, most hyped eyeshadow palette releases, keep on watching. Okay, you guys, I've got my phone right here. So if I'm looking down, you guys know why. I will pop a picture of the palettes that I'm talking about on the screen so that you guys can see as well. But first I'm gonna start with the palettes that I did order. And I am going to actually start with one that I do have in my possession. I'm thinking about doing a YouTube video on it a couple looks for you guys if you guys really want to see that um if not if you're not interested do let me know in the comments because it takes time to do those videos and i just don't want to waste my time doing it if nobody's gonna watch but it is the blooming basket eyeshadow palette from dd signature now when i'll be honest when i very very first saw this palette i wasn't sure that i wanted it I was a bit intrigued by those deep shades in there, um, that top row, and then these kind of bright neons, and then also like a grungy yellow, pastel too. It, I was intrigued, but also a little confused by the color story. Then I saw swatches, and I thought the swatches looked really, really lovely. I actually do have a quad from DD Signature, and I like the quality. It was really when I saw that price of $32 that I said, okay, I'm going to honor this brand. I'm going to honor the owner of the brand and purchase this palette because it's interesting to me enough color story wise. And I'm so happy about that price that I want to show support to a brand that is going to keep their costs down like that. Plus I've already kind of committed to you guys that in 2024, I really, really want to go back to showing a lot more affordable palettes. Yes, I will have some from time to time that are still pricier. Um, you know, I still have like, I own Pat McGrath and I own Natasha Denona, but I mean, I, I started my love for all of this by showing makeup and products that you could still get beautiful looks without spending a fortune. That's what truly gets me really, really excited and sharing that with others. And so I, I really want to go back to that again and also sharing brands that not everybody else is sharing. Sorry, I'm opening my phone again because the password went off. Um, you know, like we see the same brand shared so much. And for me, I'm personally pretty sick of it. And DD Signature is not a brand that I'm really seeing on YouTube. So I definitely wanted to give this a shot. And honestly, the color story really started to grow on me more and more. I started to think about my sickly sweet palette from Blend Bunny and how at first I was kind of confused by that color story. And I enjoyed those dark, deep tones in there with the pastel so much when I won that palette in a giveaway. And so I thought maybe this one will be like that too. Like maybe I need to be pushed out of that comfort zone a little bit with this color story. So that was the first one I pal uh, purchased $32. I could stack a code. I just, I had to honor, <laughs> I had to, right? I had to. Okay, another one that I, um did order that is not here yet and actually start to think about it i don't even know if i have confirmation in this palette so i hope <laughs> i hope that it went through it is the reckless romance palette from beauty bay 
And I, I just, you know, I saw this color story reveal and love this color story. This is kind of more so what I wanted to see from Bella Butte Bar's um, releases. It's kind of dark. It's mysterious. It's kind of grungy. It's like dark romance is what I get out of this palette. I happen to really, really love tones like that. And I love the Beauty Bay formula. Very, very inexpensive palette as well, which again, I love being able to share that with you guys. Um, so I hadn't even committed fully that I was going to purchase this palette before it released. And I got the email. I think it was the first thing I saw when I woke up the morning it released. Opened up my email. There it was. And I was like, you know what? It's a sign. It greeted me this morning. <laughs> so I'm going to order this palette. So I did. So that is on the way. And um, I do kind of keep justifying some of my purchases. of. Well, I told you guys I was going to share more affordable palettes. So I've got to purchase affordable palettes but I do need to kind of rein it in a little bit. I will say that. So let me know if you wanna see a video on that palette as well. Now, the last one, I believe, let me make sure I'm not lying to you guys. Yes, I think this is the last one that I did order and I got the shipment notification today is the Flying Fiddles palette from Adept Cosmetics. I mean, I was a sucker. As soon as I saw this reveal, I was like, yep, I'm going to be $65 uh, poorer. I couldn't help it. This color story is, even though it's neutral leaning, I don't think I have a color story quite like this in my collection, which is really hard to say when it comes to neutrals. Um, we do have like some kind of like earthy, like deserty tones in here. You do have like a little hint of blue and green. I love like the golds in here, the kind of amber shade. And plus, I mean, I love Adept's formula. And I had actually said about Adept, that I think I even said it on my channel. I know I said it to some friends, but I, I'm pretty sure I said it on the channel that I was done purchasing Adept palettes unless it's a color story that blows me away. And what I meant by that is I used to think I wanted to collect palettes from Adept. There were a couple of brands that I had that collector's mentality that anything that comes out, I don't care what it is. I'm buying it because I'm collecting them. Then I had definitely a paradigm shift where I just was like, that's not really that healthy. That's not practical. Why would you buy something just to collect it when you don't like the color story? So I've skipped the last couple of Adept palettes, but this one spoke to me so much and therefore I did purchase it and I would love to do a video on it and let me guys, let me guys, let me know if you guys want me to do that as well. All right, that is it for the ones that I purchased. Now, for the ones that I skipped on, um, let me tell you why. So let's start with the Glam Light Betty Boop. It's adorable. I think that whole collection is so, so cute. Whenever it was teased, I think all that I saw was red like a red lipstick and said like she's an icon and I told my friend Marty I was like it's Betty Boop when she already was thinking it was Betty Boop too we were like we are so smart <laughs> but I think it's really cute I do actually like the color story of the palette obviously you have to be kind of like reds mauves lover and I do love a red shadow I just for me because I was already purchasing several palettes um, I did also recently get in two palettes from MBA Cosmetics that I purchased. My Wicked Widow Beauty palette, um, that the Lovesick palette, I actually didn't include that in this because I got it in PR. So I decided not to include something I got in PR in this um, video. But I had a lot of palettes coming in basically. And so I skipped the Glam Light, but it is so cute. I would not judge anyone for purchasing this palette. I think it's really, really, really cute. Okay, um, another one that is currently available is the Zygos Beauty palette, the reflective palette. Okay, when I first saw this, I was like, 
oh my gosh, what is this brand? I'd never heard this brand before. I thought that is gorgeous. Um, if that is at all inexpensive, I will be getting that palette and it's $130, which I mean, it's a large palette. It looks like a bunch of special shades in there, but you guys know my cap is $80. I will purchase a palette over that if I get it on sale and it's under. I just won't per buy anything more than $80 for a palette. I mean, I it would have to be something just, I don't know. I don't even know what it would be. This looks gorgeous, but I did see some people comment that they could tell that these have been photoshopped. I don't know if they were familiar with the brand. I don't know how they knew that, but they said would be great, but these pictures and these swatches are photoshopped. So that really caused pause for me other than the fact that it's $130. So I would be very curious if someone does try this palette and what you think about it. I just, I can't, $130, I just can't do it. Okay. I, another palette that is already available that I skipped is the Bella Beauté Bar Dead Roses palette. <sighs> okay, this is a pretty palette. I just, I still have not tried Bella Beauté Bar. I've told you guys they've been on my list actually for a year and a half now. Forever I will think that the Strange and Unusual is their best color story that they've ever had as far as being eye-catching and unique and fun and something I didn't necessarily have in my collection. And I have skipped buying that palette so many times. Every time it was available, I was in some sort of no buy or just being really, really, really critical. And so I've made the decision that if a palette comes out that I love the color story for them, I am gonna finally try them. This just wasn't it for me. It's, it's not that it's not pretty, it's just been done so many times. It wasn't what I was expecting. I wanted something kind of more like the Beauty Bay palette, to be honest. Had this been more of that, I probably would have purchased it. It is a pretty, pretty palette, but I love the outer artwork too, but that's why I didn't purchase it. The other one from them is the Ultraviolet palette, and Again, it's a really pretty palette. You have to love purples. And I do really love purples. I think this is a palette that say, I was just getting into indie and I only owned maybe 10 palettes. You know, I mainly had drugstore palettes or maybe like a, a Tarte palette and a, like an Urban Decay palette, Too Faced. And then I saw this, I would have jumped all over it. And I used to really gravitate towards purples before I expanded my color horizon. But for me, it's just, that's a lot of purples. And I have over 300 palettes in my collection. So I probably have these purples. And that's why I didn't purchase it. I don't need a whole palette of purples, but it is pretty. Still waiting for that one from Bella Beauté Bar. Another one that is available is the Sinful Echoes palette. Um, I'm not purchasing anything from this brand. And it is because I don't really like some of the stuff that I know about behind the scenes. Um, if you want to privately maybe message me on Instagram, I'd be happy to discuss it. I don't know that I want to start like a whole war, war on YouTube. Maybe that sounds like I'm being gatekeepy or like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put on my thumbnail so I'm not trying to clickbait anyone I just you know there's just some things that I know that I do not agree with one I will tell you guys that was pointed out by someone today is that on the back of the palette the ingredients have clearly been copy and pasted from somewhere else and um, there's typos and then they left out an ingredient their preservative why they chose to leave something out that's in there, I don't know, but I think that's shady. And that's why I'm not in it. That's one of the reasons, one of the reasons why I'm not gonna purchase. However, I did think that it looked stunning. I'm not gonna lie about that. When I first saw this before I knew the stuff going on behind the scenes, I thought this looked very, very interesting. Unfortunately, it's pass, it's pass. Another one is the Electrum Cosmetics Heartbreaker 2. Beautiful. These look so, 
sparkly, so gorgeous. You know, if I had all the money in the world, I would purchase this palette. I really, really would. I think I've been wanting to try the brand. I think it looks like high quality. I believe it's $78 for this palette or $76. And I don't think that's, I don't know. It's not outrageous when you think about nine multi-chromes, you know, and how much those must may cost individually. However, I have seen some brands price at, say, in a palette, they come out to five a piece, which would make this 45, but this is almost double that. So I can't justify it myself, but I do think it looks beautiful. A big one that I skipped is the, and it's not available or it's sold out, but is the Color Pop Twilight palette, the whole collection, but let's just really focus on the, the palette. You guys, I was not impressed in the slightest when I saw this reveal. I get like the mood of the movie and the like the the lens that this film is filmed in and how it's muted and it's kind of stormy looking and it's dark and and I love a dark palette and I love a cool tone palette but this it just I don't know I just thought it was boring and then I have come to not really care for ColourPop's formula anymore. I have recently revisited my ColourPop palettes and decluttered all of them except for three. I think I've decluttered seven. It's just, I used to think it was really good and maybe it's because I've tried so much now that when I go back and try it now, I just find it, I find the shimmers to be kind of lackluster. Um, not terrible, but not, why am I going to purchase something that's just, it's not terrible, but no, I don't need to purchase that. So it would be really, really difficult, I think, to get me to purchase another ColourPop palette right now. So that is why I skipped that one. Now we just have a few left here. So let me do the ones that have had their full color story reveal. We have the Mika Beauty palette, um, One Last Wish. Oh my goodness, this looks so, so pretty. Like these, she teased them one by one and then showed the last four all at one time. Each swatch, I was just like drooling, like let me wear a bib. They just, they look gorgeous. Um, I believe it's like $85 dollars in um on for her so for us I I okay here's the thing I purchased, I purchased a pre-order of the serpent palette and um I'm still waiting on that purchased it a couple of weeks ago maybe two two and a half weeks ago we don't love a pre-order most people don't um but I did pre-order it because I had been waiting and waiting for that to come back in stock I'm trying to find my photos again Okay, and with shipping, I paid, I, I'm afraid too much for that palette. So this palette would be even more. So I'm, I'm guessing with shipping that this comes to a little over like 120. So even though it looks gorgeous, I can't do it. And I, no, I probably shouldn't have paid as much as I did for Serpent, but I was committed to trying this brand and I went for it and I hope I don't regret it. We shall see. Let me know if you guys want me to honestly, honestly review that palette. Um, definitely let me know. Another one that's already had its full reveal um, and launches soon is the Cryptine Cosmetics palette. Um, you guys, I'm so intrigued. This is actually really similar. I didn't think about it till just right now. This is really similar to the Twilight palette. But whereas the Twilight palette looks kind of dusty and old, <laughs> this just looks more enticing to me. Um, the packaging looks identical to me of Adepts, that faux leather packaging. 
So we already know the packaging's nice. I am intrigued by the color story. It's an interesting first release. It's not too splashy. I don't know. I'm very, very intrigued by this. And I haven't decided if I'm going to purchase it yet. It launches on the 16th of February, so I better decide soon. I'm really thinking about it. I really am. Um, all right, so we have, I believe, just two left. And one of them has had like a little sneak peek and then the other one hasn't been revealed at all, but I'm still gonna talk about them. So this one is the NBA Cosmetics Moonlit Marsh 3 palette. No, I don't know if that three is supposed to be there. Moonlit Marsh. Okay, well, it shows on the actual cover, it just says Moonlit Marsh and then in their text, um, on Instagram, it says Moonlit Marsh 3. So anyway, only three shades as of this point have been revealed from this. This is a collaboration with Basket Case Beauty. Um, she has really, really beautiful looks. I do follow her on Instagram. And I just recently tried out those two palettes from NBA Cosmetics. If you guys want to see that, I try them out in a video where I'm talking about the rise of cost of indie brands and I use the Sunset Beach palette and the Pumpkin Kisses Autumn Wishes palette in that video. I was blown away by the quality. I do think it is a um, private label used, you know, brand, but the quality is there. Could not deny how beautiful my looks were. I loved the color stories and they were affordable. So doesn't bother me. I would assume this one is that way too. Who knows if now maybe she has her own formula. I'm not sure. This is a larger palette than those. This does have 20 shades. Looks like you're going to have mattes, multi-chrome shimmers in this. Moonlit Marsh. And by the tease of these three is the way that it looks is it's going to be murky, deep blues, maybe a black in there. And then you have like your, like your, how do I say murky greens? Your, and then some light blues coming in from like the moonlight, maybe like a little champagne color in there. I'm intrigued. And I, if this is priced well, if this is priced, I was going to say, if this is priced $50 or less, but then I'm like, but then what if it's priced 52? Am I going to get, I'm just, let me just tell you guys, I'm, I'm just waiting for the price and I'm very, very interested. The very last one that I have no information other than just the teaser is the, I have no idea how you say this, you guys, the Dievarune Cosmetics. I don't know how you say it. Um, their Garden of Gloom palette. All that I've seen is the teaser where it says, Behold the gloomy garden fair. You'll find a secret hidden there. A secret spot for you and me where wonder and beauty blooms magically. And as the moth one day will meet her moon, so we shall meet in our Garden of Gloom. Ah, hello, Ad Edgar Allan Poe just raised from the dead. And he's like, you stole my vibe. I just think... The teaser is awesome. That that artwork, if it looks like that inside, I love that color story. Very, very, very interested. But this was teased a while ago, and I've seen nothing else, and it just says coming soon. So, I mean, keep your eye out, and I'll keep my eye out as well. All right, you guys, that is all of the hyped up palettes, at least in my mind, and why I purchased them or why I skipped them or why I'm very interested in them. You guys let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, have fun shopping, budget shopping. Bye.